football pitch and and uh, uh, photo taken for 16 with the 60 second exposure and the most interesting part the, the image we took uh, on ngg 7479 actually had a uh, that day there was a super war and but uh, all thought it was a it was a uh, it was a it was noise and uh, the, the mountain reported. But the next day we found that it is in Sopano and another group has actually reported it. And after a month I checked and you can see, uh, let me go back to the previous one. As you can see, the, uh, the Sopano is very faint here. Yeah, it's just uh, I don't, but when I checked in May, I mean, I, I checked after um, exactly a month, and you can see how it's going to end right now. <coughs> uh, uh, so after the initial event uh, of AWB, uh, in 2010, in uh, January, I, I coordinated a, a project called Big Deeper to Southern Cross. Uh, the idea of Big Deeper to Southern Cross is uh, most of us actually, uh, those who are living in northern hemisphere, they don't get to see what's in the, south, the, the beauty of the southern hemisphere. And those who are living in the southern hemisphere, they don't get to actually see uh, what's in the, uh, the northern hem hemisphere, unless of course you travel across. So the idea of uh, the, the big tip of the southern cross is that Using remote observing facilities from uh, from either uh, from both of the hemispheres, we, we do a live program for two days, and uh, with commentary and uh, get people to actually get give the give the opportunity for people to uh, enjoy the the hemisphere you are not you are not in, and. Uh, so we had a really good response for this program, and uh, these are some of the images taken from Northern Hemisphere. Uh, the, for the Northern Hemisphere, actually, we used uh, the virtual telescope in uh, Italy, and uh, for Southern Hemisphere, we used the we used uh, a telescope from Global Rentoscope Network. They have a they have a uh, telescope that we used one in Australia. Uh, for this event, for uh, actually the from for both uh, parts, the southern, northern, and the southern, we had four seven thousand participants from more than eight countries, which is impressive. I, I, I so uh, this is actually what I mean. This actually shows how much people are interested in, and uh, of course, we we always want to promote. Uh, uh, and encourage people to go out and observe with their using their telescopes. So joining and joining and stuff like But at times it, it's not possible because some of us actually live in uh, in a uh, light polished polluted sky with light polluted skies, so or we have bad. <coughs> so this actually uh, for especially for for places like those and people who live in places like those. Uh, the remote observing is a very good opportunity to experience. And these are the, these are the facilities we use uh, from, from Italy. We use uh, two telescopes. Um, this is more like a Sony we had actually gave to everybody who participated in our event. Um, after the uh, uh, um, this is actually another program we had this in the same uh, in during uh, end of the year actually. After the initial program in 2010, um, this was more like a cosmic pressures was like the end, uh, end ending uh, event for that year, which uh, had a massive part vision as well. And uh, as you may know, we. Uh, uh, the, to continue the enthusiasm and momentum given by IOIA, we wanted to IAWB created a Global F1 Month, which is one of our, which is actually the biggest uh, program of AWB. Uh, 
every April we celebrate uh, the whole month as Global Astronomy Month. So the, the initial uh, effort was in 2010, and we had many programs running during uh, uh, Global Astronomy Month. And one aspect was the remote observing. We had uh, remote observing programs running throughout the throughout the April from April with uh, there was an online measurement and which actually ran for more than twelve hours. And then on seventh April uh, there was a <coughs> program called Is There Anybody Out There which was a program to uh, which was an event that to observe a couple of exoplanets. And mm -hmm. on first fifteen April we, we were there was a program called right right to name in the sky which is a uh, and which was an event to observe an asteroid. On the uh, 22nd, uh, we had a the solar system which uh, we observed several solar planetary objects. Other than this event, from <coughs> 2 of April, actually, we gave free telescope time for parts. Uh, there were participants uh, requesting telescope time from more than 50 countries. and. But if you the high demand, you are only able to give uh, uh, the telescope time, which is a which is about one hour for about uh, thirty people. And uh, we, after the initial uh, global astronomy month in 2010, uh, this year we had the, uh, the second edition, which is uh, which is actually uh, uh, the I should mention also was involved as well. She was heavily involved with the uh, with GTTP and created moon, uh, moon days. And uh, in the remote observing aspect, we had uh, several different programs, programs running from the online machine marathon is one of the favorite uh, uh, programs and we have, we have thousands of uh, people participating in this. And then there was a Saturn watch and then there was an event for Global Star Party, and we observed the moon. And uh, since the, uh, the uh, we have in the facilities in Italy, there's a one telescope which is a, which has a uh, solar filter. So we did the day event as well, observing sun. And uh, then we did the uh, well repeat another program from last year. Uh, uh, we are looking at all the couple of asteroids. And uh, these actually show the, the most of these events actually ha have a high equation for uh, four or five thousand from uh, it's spanned into more than twenty countries. And uh, this is all the, the effort we have started from the hundred hours of astronomy and now shows the interest people have from throughout the world. And I think uh, the, the the global hands on on the universe and AW can we can collaborate on the remote observing aspect for more to do more programs and expand. Uh, uh, at the this is actually my end of my presentation, but I want to uh, officially invite uh, <coughs> from astronomers without borders to global. I'm, I mean I'm part of the both organizations, but I would like you to consider collaborating with us on remote observing and because we do have I mean we do have a really good network and I but it, it's always better to get more people in all and I, I think uh, the way to move forward is actually collaborating on just you know doing the own thing. And uh, from I, I think uh, we can get more students and teachers involved uh, we are global hands on units as well. So I'm welcome to any idea solution. You can contact me or we can have a uh, maybe we can have a Skype conference. So uh, I, I look forward to working for a good collaboration with the AWB and uh, global hands on. Uh, thank you very so much and if you have any questions I'm ready to answer. Yeah. Come here. Come sure. here. Come. Yeah.
Hi, Tony and Carl, Penny Packer. Uh, that was just fabulous. Right. I'm so impressed with what you can do with, Hi, uh, with, with your resources. It's really inspiring. <coughs> I, I miss, so do we know where the 15,000 people were distributed who watched? Uh, it's showing people in the camera. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing anything. Uh, Carl asked where the 15,000 people from the campaign where came from. Do, you, do we know that? The, the countries? Yes. Yes, of course. We know uh, how many came from each country. Okay. More questions? Yeah, yeah, I can email you more details. I can email Paul more details, okay, more details if he is interested. He said that can be very instructive for Jihu. Sure. When? When? The astronomy was out? <coughs> Hi, this is Alan Gould. Uh, when, when did Astronomy Without Borders start? Was it IYA or, or um, before that? Did you hear uh, Rosa, could you repeat the question? I didn't hear. When, when did the uh, Astronomers Without Borders start? Was it uh, before IYA or was it during IYA? Did you hear, Timina? Um, actually, astronomers about borders uh, was yes, I heard. Actually, astronomers without borders uh, started in uh, before I think 2007. The headquarters is in uh, California, in fact. Uh, it, it's founded by uh, and the president is Mike Schumann. Uh, but basically, since 2007 to, to end of 2009, it, it has been working on. Uh, we have been working on IYA project mainly, and uh, I, I joined in a baby in the latter part of IYA, and now we have a global network of uh, 40 countries. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm, I am in uh, Thailand now in a conference. Uh, uh, the IAU Asia Asia Pacific Conference, and we have gathered three more countries. So basically, every week, one or two weeks, it will be 43 countries. A second, please, there's one more question. Uh, yeah, man, I mean, if you can tell Kalina sure. and Aviva that they, they should look at Vivian's talk on Skynet. Uh, Lina, Carol is saying, well, we have recorded mm -hmm. this whole conference, so when that is available, yes. you should see Vivian Hoek's uh, talk on Skynet. It's uh, very good and it will certainly be very interesting. But uh, I, I, I will tell you more about it. <coughs> Great. Okay, so Lina, uh, thank you very much. It was brilliant. Stand by, please, because after a talk, yes. Uh, we are trying, I, I, I hope we can... Thank you. Please stand by.